Hey, everybody. Uh, this is Jeff Wellstead, uh, founder of Big Bear Partners. Um, I am a consultant that basically works typically with fast growth uh, technology companies of all sorts. Um, and I basically help them usually post investment with the creation of their people strategies and through and through all of their HR components and everything else, and especially their human resource technologies. Um, my latest kind of focus uh, from Big Bear is basically the focus of, of kind of understanding how AI is really kind of taking HR technologies and the HR function to the next several levels uh, strategically. Um, and I'm thrilled to be joined today um, by Jack Carey from this very interesting uh, company that seemingly kind of popped up out of nowhere on my radar anyway, uh, certainly not theirs. Um, and that is Factorial HR. Um, and Factorial is, uh, it's a fascinating, you know, kind of HRS uh, or human, I hate, I hate the term human capital management. It just feels, feels so distraught, but a human resource information system is, is without question what you guys are. And, uh, and yeah, I just want to start by, by saying hello to Jack and thanking him for being with us today. And, uh, and Jack, why don't you just introduce yourself and then we'll, we'll get some things kicked off here. Yeah, cheers, Jeff. It's um, it's lovely to be here. Like you say, so Factorial HR is the company. It's funny, we were talking before we hopped on and started recording this about the last 10 years and the kind of boom that's happened across HRISs and the market as a whole. That That's really similar to both the Factorial journey as a whole, but also my journey with Factorial. So born out of Barcelona, sunny Barcelona, Spain in 2016. We kind of started scoping our system out to become more of what we call like an enterprise solution, an enterprise level solution, but with an SMB ease of use and a focus on that market as well. So my journey with Factorial started a few years ago. I started as an account executive. I worked my way up in terms of seniority and then went on to enterprise. So slowly as I've been here, I've seen the evolution not only of the platform of Factorial, but also of the target market in terms of size. So us scoping out, us being able to absorb from like 10 employees all the way up to, in some cases, 10,000 employees. Um, wow. But but yeah, it's been a really interesting journey. I've now hopped across onto the strategy side of things. I'm sure we'll speak more about that later with the AI scope on this and your expertise yeah. in that area. Yeah. Um, but no, it's great to be here and it's great to have a chat with someone who's so prominent in the market. So, um, so yeah, cheers, Jeff. Oh, that's really kind. Thanks, buddy. Um, yeah, look, my experience with the market is having having been an American over here in London uh, for the last 20 years, um, with my focus almost entirely on the small to medium sized hyper growth uh, tech, you know, kind of startup to scale up, you know, kind of uh, kind of sector. Um, I've always ever been really frustrated at the journey that HR has to take, you know, with regard to that. Look, it's hard being in a startup in the first instance. You're always ever resource and cash constrained. Um, so, you know, you start off basically behind the eight ball, as, as they say, and um, and it's frustrating as hell uh, trying to figure out, like, how is it we're going to create this incredibly cool, super attractive, uh, brilliant environment that is going to get the best people over here, really going to make a difference, get them plugged in, get them trained up and and motivated such that they, you know, from our perspective, they're going to they're going to stick around, right? We're going to be able to retain the talent, and then importantly, really kind of drive productivity and innovation and all all the wonderful things we want to see happen. Oh, by the way, you can only hire one person, you know, or maybe two people, and it's like, okay, how are we going to get all this done? We got to, you know, I got to pay people, I got to set up benefits, I, I have to do all the compliance paperwork. You want me to run the entire recruitment, you know, process? Uh, through to offer. Oh, onboarding. Yeah, we need that too. And offboarding. And uh, and then everything in between. Like, you know, who's setting goals? What about performance management? Um, what about what about a development plan off the back of it? Oh, yeah. Training and development. Make sure we do that too. Cheaply, by the way, um, and fast. So if you can have all that done, Mr. or Ms. HR person, by the end of the week, that would be phenomenal. Thank you so much. And that's basically the HR journey, which is why the technology, especially today, you know, with the advent of AI, and we'll get into that in a minute, is so absolutely mission critical. It's existential, not just for the HR function, for the company, right? I mean, not for nothing. This is the most important asset a company will ever have. And I can't stand it when people just trump, you know, trump all over that the, the kind of notion of, you know, you know, the humans are, are the greatest assets, basically, that they go up and down the elevators at the end of every day, blah, blah, blah. Um, 
No, no, no. It's much, much more important than that because without them, you are literally nothing. And actually, without each one of them individually, there is, you know, potentially a huge gaping hole, and and that basically has to to get sorted uh, with skill. So I have been on the hunt over and over and over again, Jack, looking for the holy grail of of kind of HR tools. The challenge for me was was, I mean, I've done this now what sixteen times since I've been over here, challenge was always ever, of course, cost. Yes, that's that's a factor, right? Because I'm not the only game in town looking for HR, looking for software rather. Um, everybody's everybody's needing a bit of something. But it's also how much functionality can I cram into one purchase? Um, and how much interconnected, seamless, ease of use, you know, kind of scenarios and, and ease of navigation um, you know, situations and experiences, can I fit into one app? Um, it's, it was always ever so tough, right? So, I mean, buying, you know, getting uh, a system of record, of course, is like table stakes, right? That's your compliance challenge. That's your administrative challenge and so on and so forth, you know, kind of sorted. But that's not something it feels like you're doing for employees. It's not something that your leaders are asking you for. Everybody's just expecting that as a table stakes, you know, kind of situation. It's, it's, the, it's, it's the, it's this notion of like, how do we create, you know, across the entirety of the employee life cycle and seeing life through an employee's eyes and through the eyes of our leaders and the eyes of our managers who oversee our people. How do we create as beautiful and seamless and engaging and competent an experience as we possibly can across all those components, right? Um, and I tell you what, man, it's been hard. It's been hard because I don't for whatever reason, the HR tools were just always lagging, um, always slow to add things. Then it was like, oh, no, no, we're going to get a module. You know, we're going to have a module. It's going to replace your ATS solution. And then you look at it and you're like, it does like 0.001% of what my current ATS solution does. But I hear you. Please go back and develop it more because I need more functionality of it. I don't need all the bells and whistles. I just need it to do more than it's doing. And then the same happened with performance management. We'll slap a module in terms of that, but it won't be anything you know like you'd see from a, a point solution that you might go out and buy. <sighs> Frustrating as hell, right? I mean, honestly, it's just like, I don't have a lot of money, but I want this functionality because I know it's gonna have a massive impact. And what I'm seeing today, and that's why we're on the on the on the blower at the moment, chatting with each other, is is the fact that these companies, especially in the, the sort of HR information system space, are are taking it to the next level. And especially with the advent of AI, we're able to kind of completely reimagine, you know, the utility of tools like this. And so that's why I'm so excited. Sorry for pontificating, but I just wanted to kind of you know create that identification out there. It's a it's a real minefield and it's a real hard one to navigate. So, you know, please tell me, you know, Factorial has done something interesting, something special with this space. Give give me a, a flavor for that journey and, and where you guys are are going from here. Yeah, no, so it's it's very relevant to that conversation that we just had then, actually, because sometimes when we have that conversations with HR professionals and we actually ask, why did you get into HR? What actually brought you into HR in the first place? Mm -hmm. People typically don't say because they wanted to do legal compliance or because they wanted to check everyone's time off across an annual year, you know? Right. Typically, the answer that you get the most is because we wanted to help employees be happy, be engaged with the workforce. We wanted to help develop the talent within the workforce. We wanted to help actual outcomes on a on an on a high level with with the company so i think that's that's really the responsibility of a hr platform it's it's those three prongs isn't it it's the compliance element of course which is always going to underpin it yeah. then it's the getting the admin stuff right so that you've got that efficiency so that you've got that time saving typically yeah. what we experience is around 30 hours a fortnight depending on what other platform you come from or where you've moved from mm -hmm. but typically that was what we'll experience and then the ability to take that time and put it into where you actually want to put it, those value added activities that you can use the system as an underpinning, but where really it's reliant on that HR person to, to drive that forward and create those outcomes across the business. So, so yeah, I mean, what I can do is I'll hop into a little presentation yeah, here. I, know I don't, I don't want to bore everyone to death because I'm sure everyone's presentation to death on these things, but I'll, I'll quickly create an underpinning. 
because it's quite interesting considering the foothold we have in the UK market, how few people, when we come into the conversations, have heard of us before we hop in. So what is Factorial? So we call ourselves an all-in-one. So we do it from the recruitment aspect all the way into the onboarding, the general employee lifecycle management, be it that the operational side or the performance side, in towards the payroll pre and post and the offboarding as well. So that's who we are really briefly. Okay, cool. In terms of our market, so we have over 10,000 clients. We operate within 62 different countries. We have over 30 languages within our employee base. So we're very international in our build out. We've got a few different offices globally. We've got one HQ for Europe in Barcelona. We have a bunch of employees out in the field all over Western Europe. We've got Brazil, Mexico City, Miami there, for example, and we're growing three times every year on year. So the experience in terms of the growth that we've had is, is not very typical on the market, and it's something that we're looking to continue with the partnerships that I'm sure we'll talk about more with Microsoft, with SAP. Um, so yeah, that's just a little bit of a background. And then again, just to provide- Can you go the back to the slide real quick, Jack, uh, just on this point? This is super important, right? Because when I go through a buying experience, especially being an American and kind of, you know, kind of suffering from that sort of, you know, kind of American centralized perspective and view on the world, you know, we build things there and then we ship them elsewhere and then, you know, leave it up to the locals basically to go sort through all of the complexities. And uh, and oftentimes they end up having to kind of do some some back end reconfiguration capabilities. Um, as I remember, like working with companies like Bamboo and so forth, really good, solid, robust pieces of software. And it does everything on the tin it should do. But then suddenly you move into a new territory, a new geography, a new country, especially in Europe, uh, which was as an absolute kaleidoscope um, in some cases from hell, <laughs> trying to keep up with regulations um, and requirements and, and everything else um <clears throat> it's it's a train wreck right you're, you're suddenly your your software that was generated in america um it just didn't account for everything so now you got to get specialists on the phone to kind of reconfigure all of the different components and then figure out okay if you sign in from barcelona you're going to get these screens versus if you sign in from bristol uk you're going to get these screens you know what i mean and it just you just whiz through something so critically important, which is it feels like you guys were born in the land of of complexity, you know, and you basically embraced it. And then you kind of built in all of this capability around it. So suddenly you can quite comfortably operate across a multitude of different countries and their employment laws and things of that nature. Is, is Do I have that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I think the problem that a lot of people experience is there's a certain level of copy and paste on these solutions when you go into a new market. And of course, like you've just said, what works in America there might not work in Germany. It might not work in France where the payroll laws are so complex and there's so much going on on the time track inside of things. Yep. So that can be quite scary when you go into a new market. So, so what you ideally want is you want number one, someone to tell you what the regulations are and, and the best use, the best practices, the best case scenarios for it. Number two, if you're hiring that talent locally within that market, you want them to be able to hop on towards customer support or your account manager or, whom, or whomever it may be. And you want them to be able to have a conversation in their local language where everything is properly transmitted and they've got the ability to have that carried out. Nothing's lost in translation there and everything's catered towards that market. So we very much got that in mind with any of our expansion. If we operate in a market, we'll have the expertise on that market and we'll have the language capabilities there as well. Lovely. Very good. Thank you. Cool. Again, I'll just keep this slide up and then I'll I'll shut up with the presentations because I'm sure everyone's seen enough presentations to last a lifetime. But just to hammer in our focus, so so we we typically market ourselves as an enterprise level solution in terms of the depth of the features that we have. So I'm sure we'll we'll hop into that a bit more later. But in the ATS, having all the AI performance, including things like talent mapping, the time tracking, having geofencing if required there, mm. but the ease of use of an SME solution. So any of the development on Factorial, what drives that and what underpins that is the directive that it's going to be a maximum of two clicks for the end user to get any outcome. So you'll see when we hop into the inbox, it's always going to be two clicks. If I'm completing a performance review, if I'm signing a document, if I'm doing my onboarding tasks, for example, it's always going to be two clicks. I love it. Right. 
Love it. So yeah, I'll let you ask some questions if you'd like, Jeff, rather than than following yeah, no, the presentation is, um, format. You, okay, so <laughs> just being completely open and honest and transparent with you. Look, when I first started hearing about Factorial, which was weirdly only like 12, 12 maybe a few more months than that ago, um, <clears throat> I was thinking, oh gosh, here we go again, right? Yet another launch of yet another HRIS tool that's going to do exactly the same thing as the 12 you know, preceding HRIS tools. And you know how is this going to be different? And um, <clears throat> what I always ever look for when I when I kind of work um, strategically and partner with with different vendors uh, out there are a couple of things. One is I look for people who care deeply about the user experience, right? And I know everybody talks about this thing, you know, UX, UI, and it's really important to have and you know a decent front end that's <clears throat> really engaging, really fun to kind of work with, and everything else. And and, uh, and so on and so forth. Now, this is different, right? These tools, it's a make or break. It becomes existential for them because you need everybody in the organization to be able to adopt uh, and adapt, right, to it if it's going to work properly and do the, do the magical things we'd hope to do. So I love the notion of you guys thinking up front, it's only ever going to be two clicks. Sounds dead simple, really, really hard architecturally when you think about all the different kind of like functional uh, components that need to kind of take place in there. Um, it's very easy as an engineer to kind of just lose the plot and be like, okay, yeah, so it took 15 clicks to get here, but wow, look at this functionality. Isn't this nifty? And then suddenly you're in Oracle world or SAP world. Do you know what I mean? Where it's engineers first, people second, employees last, you know, in terms of the way that they, they typically think about that experience in my experience anyway. So I love that notion. I think that's really, really clever. Um, I also love the notion, and the other thing I look for in vendors is their their hunger and appetite for innovation. And what always ever kind of wards me away from, you know, kind of tools like this is ones that actually actively push back on it and be like, ah, oh, this AI stuff, I just don't know. I just don't think it's going to take, you know what I mean? Which is really nothing more than a, a lazy post-rationalization for saying, we don't want to spend the time, effort, and money on this because we've got a huge install base. We've got a very static piece of software everybody trusts. Um, it's stable and it's running and it's not broken. Let's not go break it, okay? By adding some fancy new stuff in and uh, and embarrass ourselves. So we'll just come up with excuses as to why we're not going to innovate and basically get our marketing people to twist it around to say, um, actually, we choose not to do that because it's somehow bad for the user experience. Yeah, that's it bad for the user experience. And um, and there's a bunch of other really important business reasons too that'll sound really important to you. So it's fascinating. Um, so I love working with companies that are like, is there new tech coming? Yes. Is there a better way of doing this? Always. We will continuously and, and hungrily, you know, kind of examine, you know, the space and always ever be talking to our customers, always ever be thinking about the next new thing and always ever be building an open architecture so that we can always ever keep adding things. Is is that true of a factorial in your experience, Jack? Yeah, no, exactly. So AI is a big focus for us. And I think the two things to note there is, it's like what you said, number one, it's hard to develop in the first place, AI. But number two, sometimes it can be a scary word. Some people, times people hear the word AI and they think yeah. it's going to go all to part or it's not going to help with the compliance or it's going to be difficult to everyone to interact with. Yeah. So I think it's really important to still make it as simple as possible to actually interact with the AI and make it useful, right? Because what's the point in having AI built okay. in in the first place yeah. if you're not going to be able to get anything out of it, if it's not going to help with efficiency, if it's not going to help with upskilling, whatever it may be. So, I mean, I'll give you a really quick example of what yeah, we've please. done on Factorial. Let me hop into, please excuse my, my Pixar account. Sometimes I'm having a serious conversation. I'll be talking about Buzz Lightyear and I completely forget. <laughs> so just for an idea on the analytics side of things, we, we were discussing with a lot of the people who we deal with and, and people, especially in HR, maybe in a lot of SMB companies, they, they've not got SQL knowledge and they don't know how to pull those queries, right? Yep. So how can we get them to engage with building more complex reporting? How can we get it so that when they're delegating it to management, it's as easy as possible? So we just added in the Ask AI a question. So I can ask it a question such as... Something as simple as who's taking the most time off. It's going to interpret the data that you put in. Great thing about having an all-in-one is all of those data points across the entirety of the platform are able to be pulled through the analytics. 
And then within a few seconds, it's going to generate a report for you on the back end of that. So we can see here, it's highlighted my employees taking the most time off, the amount of time they've taken off. And if I actually want to do anything, maybe I've got an I I IT department, for example, who wants to do something with the SQL, it pulls the query out for you as well to do so. Nice. So I think that's a really good example of an actual useful AI where it's thoughtfully placed within the platform where you've actually thought of what the tangible outcomes are for that. And I think that's a really important note when whenever we're in this craze now of AI and what's going to happen with AI, what it can do, making yeah. sure that we're, we're not straying from the actual reason to put it in place, from the fact that we want it to be useful and we want it to be simple enough for it to make everyone's life easier and make it to be, to be easy to use, no? Yeah, no, I like, what I like about it <clears throat> is it doesn't take you out of the context of the use of the tool. It's, it's clearly built into the tool. So the context is always over there. And when you present the data, and this was a super simple one. Um, I saw a couple of other examples that really kind of blew my mind um, <laughs> that were much more kind of full blown, um, but it creates it in the context of the actual app itself. And so you'd never have to kind of leave that environment and it doesn't get confusing switching back and forth, which is what I have to do a lot of times now where I've got an HR tool open and I'm, I'm kind of building, I don't know what, like a skills ontology or a careers framework or something like that. And I'm like, oh God, okay, they don't have anything. I'm going to go back out. I'm going to use OpenAI or Gemini or whatever it is um, and Perplexity or somebody. And I'm going to get them to build me a careers framework. And I'm going to have to tweak that and go back and forth with it, then cut and paste that and kind of drop it back into this app. It, it's a nightmare, right? It's, I mean, it's it's like, you know, it's a nightmare. It's not a real nightmare. Um, it's just <laughs> a butt and it's a waste of time. So I love the fact that you're building it in. Yeah. And I mean, just to give you an idea of the scope, I've got another platform here. I've been a bit lazy, so I've not put it in that platform. So we'll hop into another one. Sure. But just an example of what we can do even on the recruitment side of things. Maybe I've added a job posting. I can have it, whereas given who's a match to the actual job posting that I have, I can hop in. It's going to pull the tags from the CV so that I can filter down the candidate pool in the future. It's going to pull the AI summary so that I don't have to read through the whole of the... Um, of the CV of the cover letter there, for example, it's going to be able to give me the ability to put a command in, for example, on the candidate pool and give a percentage match to that command. This this is all early stage of what we're implementing. Actually, we've we've just signed a big partnership with Microsoft. Um, mm -hmm. So what that means is we're going to fit within their applications, but it also means that we're working in tandem on a few AI projects. So where you'll see this develop is super exciting over the next six months. We're going to get to the point and the, the overall vision is that we're going to have that, that premise where we're going to have that chat button where you're asking it those commands and it's going right. to give you those insights directly from that. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, you were telling me a little bit about this Microsoft uh, partnership and you're you're blowing right past it like it's, not that big a deal. <laughs> and in truth, um, what's fascinating about about what you're doing with them, uh, uh, slightly atypical from other partnerships I've seen Microsoft strike, where it's sort of like, here, we're going to give you a piece of paper with our Microsoft logo on it. And you get to go slap <laughs> on the website. Um, it's, it's much more than that. They're kind of taking a look at you guys and it really kind of taking a bet and saying, hey, for those of you not ready for the full blown, you know, full fat version of Microsoft Dynamics, um, you know, capability, um, who are sort of in the SMB category, who are kind of up and comers, but don't need to be strangled by a massive HR system. In fact, you want the opposite. You want something that's really interactive, really fun, really cool, really useful. Um, yeah, um, basically, this is this is the way to go, you know, connect with Factorial on this. But for you guys to then be availed to some of the smarts um, on that, the other side of that, it, you know, that that mm -hmm. vent with such an Adela and um, an open AI and so forth, that's that's pretty exciting. Yeah, super. No, it's super exciting for everyone here. And um, we, we take it as a big compliment that they saw us as agile enough, as quick enough in our development to be the people yeah. who they back. I think that says a lot especially considering the strength of the market. I mean, you know yourself in, in each of these segments, there's there's a lot of strong um, a lot of strong providers now. So we take that as a big compliment. But but what that means is that it's going to be really strong with all of these AI inputs. There's no better person to be um to be paired with at the moment than than Microsoft on the yep. AI side of things. And that's going to be introduced in a way, like I say, that's easy to use. It's not going to be scary for everyone to uptake. 
and it's going to be actually useful in terms of the output. So it's going to give you that efficiency. It's going to give you that time back so that you can put it in those value adding activities as well across the well, platform. So, so give me a couple of other use cases here, Jack. Um, you, you, that was recruitment. And then you shared with me before just an ad hoc, um, you know, kind of query about somebody's, you know, time off and things of that nature. Where, where else can I use this, this tool? So yeah, so where it's going to be developed out to the end vision is, for yeah. example, maybe I'm doing my shift planning, I'm a manufacturing plant, I want mm. to take the workload off of my operational employees, I could put a command into my chatbot, for example, let's let's reload, the let's take the workload off the operational employees and move it to X, Y, and Z department. What that'll right. do is it'll automatically rehash the shifts and the schedule, and it'll make it so that that's much more spread in terms of the workload across those different departments. So that's just one use case um, that's going to be developed very shortly. This this is the initial build out of this. So this has all happened actually over the previous quarter in terms of how this build out has happened and how it's gone live in the accounts. Right. The next quarter, you're going to see a lot more of that building of the actual active, the commands hopping in, rejigging for you. And of course, there'll still be that control for the HR person to be able to override any of this, to be able to chop and change all of this as well. Um, so I wouldn't worry on that. But um mm -hmm. But yeah, that's one thing I would say. It's all well and good. I, I know a lot of people who are watching this have probably been in demos with HR platforms before where people have said <laughs> it's on the roadmap, it's on the roadmap, it's on the roadmap. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're actually building and, and we're actively building. We talked before this about how much we developed even in the two years since you'd first saw us, Jeff, or, or the right. year. Um, and it's true. I mean, the things we've added in terms of the performance being linked to the AI, in terms of... Um, build out on the spending categories to have it more of a procurement channel in terms of building in all of these different new features throughout the platform. We, we've got a track record of developing really fast. Um, I mean, I'll just show you through one more use case. I don't want to harp yeah. on on this point too much for you, but just in terms of how it's feeding through towards the performance channels, if I hop into my OKR review, for example, and I'm an admin, I can pull all of my team insights on the alignment between the manager's results, between the team's results. I can have a bell curve that I can hop in and I can calibrate depending on the score splits. Or I can even just pull a summary of how the team's done, suggested action items that I can then build into workflows that will give those tangible outcomes. I mean, it's all well and good having a performance feature, but if you're not going to do anything with the results, then it's it's almost redundant being there, right? So we've got it's, that. It's even, it's even more it. existential than that, Jack, right? From my, my perspective, sorry for interrupting real quick, but look, I've, I've got real passion behind this notion of objectives and key results, right? Which originally started, feel, feels like a million years ago, but like the early 70s under, under um, Andy Grove over at Intel. Uh, who suddenly realized that the Japanese were were creating, you know, transistor based, you know, kind of silicon chips and so forth that were just going to completely destroy Intel's future, and that Intel, what they were manufacturing and designing, was all wrong. And so he was like, "Oh dear God, what are we going to go do?" And he came up with a super simple plan. I want three objectives from everybody in the organization, and and I'm going to work on the ones across the organization. And we're going to look at those objectives and there's going to be, you know, three to five key results, measurable key results that are going to sit underneath each one of those things, which we're going to work like hell to get done when they're done, largely we will determine how much of that objective actually got completed. And then we'll just keep chomping on it every quarter, every every six months, every year until we get to where we got to go. And it basically saved the company. So now we're using this basically as, as a tool to help us all stay focused, especially in our early days. You know, when you're a small to medium sized enterprise, you don't have the luxury of having managers who just manage, right? Everybody is a player coach. Everybody is doing everything. So you need to, everybody needs, um, you know, a set of kind of like combined instructions to kind of stay on point and to kind of continuously deliver. Where this all falls down, is the notion of, God, if I'm, if I'm running back and forth, A, trying to come up with these things, B, trying to figure out how they ladder up and align to everybody else's, C, then I have to track these things, like what, every day, every week, and then kind of report back on them, and then D, on what basis? Like, is it just me putting a finger in the air saying, I think I got this much of that done, I'm not sure, and, and so that's where it all falls apart. And everybody's like, this is a waste of time. This is useless. And this is another typical bureaucratic, you know, failure. And what I love about the application of AI in this direction is you're suddenly making sense of it, right? I mean, if, in three different ways, you just showed me real quick. But this narrative is, is especially fascinating because <laughs> – 
that's what everybody needs to understand is this is the progress we've made this week. Here's what we didn't get done this week. Here's probably what we should focus on next week. And you know what I mean? And it's like this notion of like, it's almost like a, it's almost like a bot, like a, like a robot, right? It's, it's just kind of keeping a very, very clever robot that's keeping an eye on very complicated movements in the organization and things getting done. Um, and then it gets exciting to update it. You know what I mean? I, then I want to go in and I actually do want to kind of like track it because it's going to end up in the summary. And it's also going to inform me about how that impact, how, how the work I got done impacts other aspects of work in the organization and also potentially where it is I can step in and help. So I think that this kind of an application is is clever as. Yeah, and I think what you've just said has been more and more prevalent in the market of the last, certainly the last two years that I've been working at Factorial. I mean, when I first started, it was very much a managerial approach where the managers would add those goals and then they'd track them themselves and blah, 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 blah. But it's kind of evolved into the fact where a lot of our clients will be given the self-service to the employees to be able to hop in and add those goals. And then it'll notify the manager. They'll come in, they'll work on it in tandem. They'll they'll put comments on it. They'll sign off on all of these. Um, I think that's a really important note, but it's also the ability to use that AI to pull things on here. Like, I mean, I think I've got an example in my performance section. Yeah, let's look at yeah. this. The performance is huge for me, right? I mean, and yeah. it's huge for the employees. So we're going to get to that in a minute as well. Yeah. But I've got an example here of my top 20% performers in a certain goal, for example, that I've just pulled from a command on the platform and it's pulled out my top three, for example, there. So what that can do is that could link into a workflow on the benefit side of things where they get X, Y, and Z extra compensation. They get X, Y, and Z extra whatever it may be within the platform. But also maybe let's say if I'm on a low score, I can automate it where it's shooting out the workflows on the back end of that. Let's say I mean, I'm, I'm looking at my talent map in here, but I've got a low score on my communication. What that can do is it configure it so that you're completing your active listening training. That's the training that's associated with that, um, with that talent, for example. If I'm a manager, it's going to shoot out a task to me to book in the one-on-one -on -one with the employee. If I'm HR, maybe I can hop in the bell curve and I can do the comparison, blah, 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 blah. Which, which is all well and good. But again, bringing it back to the point that it's that two-click on factorial, Everything's just going to collate there within that inbox for you. You're just going to have to feed through onto your tasks, for example, and then you just click them off as you go along with the ability to track those, the ability to build in things like reminders, which one are overdue. Certainly hope no one who's listening to this got any tasks that are six years overdue like Buzz has here. <laughs> but um, but just for an idea of how we can link that to an actual tangible outcome, because I think that's really important and something that a lot of these systems are uh, uh, maybe missing at the moment that's where i think we should be working towards in the future right i totally agree man look i mean you know a system that basically only does that only helps hr is not the right system right so great you don't need file cabinets anymore because your stuff is going to be securely stored in, in, in some server farm in ireland or something like that uh, that's uh, who cares that's good but it's like obvious you know of course it's going to i mean everything needs to the systems of record that's sort of the point of their existence, right? It's just digitalizing, or digitizing, whatever you want to call it. The stuff that otherwise was was in just reams and reams and reams of papers and files and things of that nature. So that's like absolutely core table stakes. Let's move on to stuff that's really going to have impact, not just um, for the HR team, um, but actually for the employees first right? Because we want to give these people agency. We want to give them control. We want to give them transparency. Why? Because people who have, you know, these facts and figures and and uh, and ideas and, and potentially even some AI at some stage at their disposal are going to take on a lot more agency and a lot more ownership and accountability, right, for themselves. And, um, and importantly, they're going to feel like they've got more uh, more insight into into kind of like how it is they're being perceived at the organization, what their career opportunities might look like, what skills they have today and should be celebrated for, and what skill gaps they have that they need to basically remediate. Um, you know what I mean? And then how do you do that? Well, the system probably should help you out in, in doing those sorts of things. So I love that notion that you guys are taking, you know, that view that everybody at every layer benefits from this thing. Um, I suspect, too, at some point when your AI gets really kind of like inculcated in every aspect of this, there's going to be some truly mind boggling insights, you know, from a metadata perspective 
right, that leadership and your exec team um, in particular can really benefit from because, A, you're going to be able to democratize it, make it available to them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of course, you're going to probably have to explain a bunch of it, which is totally understandable. Um, but also you're going to basically help them steer the organization. This this kind of tooling and this kind of thinking around your app basically is now starting to become a predictive thing. So instead of you know being the poor C- CFO having to look in the rearview mirror all the time saying, this is what just happened, this is what just happened, this is what just happened, here's the budget for the future, we hope it works. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. You can actually have a conversation with the CEO and everybody in the room that says, what do you want to do commercially? Great. I understand that. That's cool. Let me go back to my app. Let me tell you what the relative state of, of capacity and uh, readiness is based on You know what I understand of my organization. I can get you the best performers. I can get you the people ge- you know, geographically you know, kind of located there already. We can also create an internal marketplace potentially and, and figure out you know who's going to be right for, for shifting this over. And importantly, very quickly, we now know who we have to go out to the market and hire, right? Um, and you know, so it's it's those kinds of notions. That's where, where HR really, I think, has its value. So I just love the fact that it feels like you guys are marching down that path, not just being another system of record. Yeah, exactly. And that's the end goal. I mean, we talked about in that presentation there in terms of providing an enterprise level solution that's yeah. going to have all those capabilities, but allowing the SMB market to have access to that and it'd be easy enough for them to just leverage on a day to day basis and use off the cuff. We're still there for the support, but but hopefully you'll just be able to do it yourself. Like you've got us there for a touch base, but you'll be able to manage it yourself. I think what would be cool if I just walk you through an example of how that works with the talent mapping. But we talked about those tangible outcomes there. We can have the job section where we're defining this role, for example, within the company. Different levels of seniority, we can add a salary benchmark to that if need be, where it's going to flag if people are outside. And define how we move from one level of seniority towards the next. What's then happening is this is getting linked within the performance section. So let's say I've not got a talent mapping, I've not got my competencies yet. I can use my AI to generate a few proposals of what these may be, a little description of these, the rating scales, et cetera, et cetera. And then I can associate these with the different job roles so that I've got that standardized practice whenever I'm doing any of these routines. How that looks like for management. Let's say I'm hopping to the competencies. Number one, I'll just show you the build out really quickly just to show you how easy it is to use. Name of the competency, descriptor of what it is, scale we're rating it on descriptor of each level of the scale for that validity when there's any delegation. For the actual um, management who's leveraging this, it's as simple as they'll just come towards the employees. All the competencies will be saved there. They've got access to all the data, pinpoint them on a scale and add any comments. For any of those business decisions, it's going to plan for you on a nine box grid, highlighting the top performers, people who need a bit more help. That's going to help with your project allocation. That's going to help with your reimbursement, with your salary reviews, whatever it may be. But from that individual standpoint, I want to see how I develop, how I regress over time. And I want to keep a track of where I am in the company, right? So what I'm going to get from that uh, perspective, let's say I'm Buzz, I can also keep a quick view of how that's evolution over the different time points of any progression, any regression there, et cetera. And we can follow this by different strains of thought. I mean, I have clients who just have these competencies as singular competencies. I have some who have like an overarching competency, which is maybe the company values, which has got sub competencies that make that up underneath um, hard and soft skills, for example. So I think it's a really exciting time in, in HR platforms because, of it course, is. there's there's a big market out there. I, I'm not by any means professing that we're the only ones who are starting to get towards that end goal. But I think I'd, I'd urge everyone to have a play around, especially if they're having a scope of the wider market. See how simple it is for everyone as an end user to actually leverage the systems, but also see what you've got access to in the background. See what you can do with the performance section. See how you can link that into your business planning that we talked about. Um, don't just think about the, the current state, but think about that future state of how your ideal software will be in a few months, in a few years time what that will look like in the AI building, because I think it's a really exciting time now to actually scope out a HR platform as well. I think I think it is, right? Like it's never been before. Um, typically it was you go to market, you jump on Capterra or G2, you know, these typical kind of software comparison websites, which don't get me wrong, I think are really clever and very, very useful. Um, but you, you know, nowadays you look at the comparisons, um, you're not going to get this level of insight 
you know, first of all, from just, you know, kind of having a quick scan, you're just going to see what features and functions typically some have versus others who don't. Um, but even the pricing is, is highly variable, so you're not going to get anything accurate from there. What I love about this, Jack, is when I come to that left-hand side menu, um, and I kind of just, if you go back to the sort of the homepage, I mean, my God, the the level of, of functionality. At first, you know, when, when you showed me like that, that very simple diagram, there's a whole bunch of stuff on there about time tracking and about, um, you know, kind of like time off and absence management and so forth. And, and I thought, how interesting. Clearly, these guys had their roots, you know, kind of working with sort of manufacturing like clients, you know, kind of hourly based workers and things of that nature, which, by the way, huge advantage because, oh, my God, the data. Do you know what I mean? Like you really can. I mean, it's fascinating, you know, how much data you have on everybody. I kind, of, I kind of in a weird way kind of wish that, you know, everybody in every organization, you know, had to kind of like, I don't know what, like check in, check out, kind of indicate, you know, what kind of projects got done that day, that kind of a thing. It'd be a nightmare. Administratively. Mm -hmm. But it's only it's only because from a data science perspective, oh, my God, you could just like get reams and reams of fascinating, you know, productivity information. But I, I just love just very quickly, just love the fact that you guys very quickly go way past sort of the bones. The, the typical scaffolding of a normal HRIS tool and get into stuff that really matters, you know, that's going to help drive the, comp the, the organization and help understand its relative health from a capability perspective um, and basically help you with things like strategic workforce planning. That sounds so simple, you know, a bit of workforce planning, right? How hard can that possibly be? Well, if you're running an engineering company um, across you know 15 different locations and you're doing some super high-end kind of tech stuff um, and you're trying to kind of continuously make sense of what is the art of the possible if we sell this contract with seven year you know two billion dollar contract you know to this to this i mean do do we have the people to staff it um can we do that you know who's here today who who do we need to hire tomorrow um what skills do we need to continuously kind of like you know all of that complexity you don't get that done in your head, you know, over a cup of coffee. Um, you need a system that can be like, great, let me grab all that and like make sense of all of this noise. And then I'll lock it down for you. And then I'll share it out in an organized fashion. And then boom, you're going to have your answer. You know, it's it's that kind of thing. And that's that's what we got to build to. I mean, and, and people typically look at that workforce planning as an enterprise solution, don't they? We we talked before this yeah. about your experience of PeopleSoft and how that was the big evolution back in the day and yeah. Workday and, and how that evolved and, and maybe some of the bigger competitors like SAP had in success factors and whatever it may be. Yeah. So people got this idea now that workforce planning is going to be that enterprise level solution. It's going to be complex. But it, it shouldn't be right with all the with all the advancements in technology, we should be able to give access to something like that to an SME and make yeah. it easy enough and simple enough for them to leverage to make their own business decisions and the right business decisions as well. Um, and I think that's one of the beauties of a system like Factorial, that it gives you that ability to, to build in those things that typically we'd always seen as enterprise There's an SME solution there as well. And we, we talked about this front page and, and just to give you an idea of, of how we develop the platform. So we're constantly tuning in that client feedback. That's that's the big developer. So the development will be client feedback, what everyone's saying in terms of the roadmap, upvoting on the roadmap from their perspective and adding new ideas. And then consultants in the HR field, consultants in all of the fields that we're working on. It's never going to be engineer led unless it's, it's premises like we talked about of making that two click theory, et cetera. Yeah, not that we well, don't love engineers. Don't get me wrong. We do love them. We do love of them. Of course, but, of course. Yeah, but, but it's it's a it's a, it's, a, it's a fact that you're kind of leading with a product mind, you know, mindset. Exactly. Yeah. At first, exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. So, so just to give you an idea on that front page as well, so we can get so much insight out of this front page. But we had a few clients who fed back that they maybe wanted this simplified for ground level users. They just wanted the inbox. They just wanted the communications page, especially if we're coming from a manual way of doing things or I won't name names, but if we're coming from maybe a more simplistic HR platform that's, that's for micro companies in towards that, that upper echelon of the SMB segment. So what we actually did is we took that on board and we allowed the reprioritization of this. So, so the ability to pick and choose, maybe I don't want teams here, maybe I don't want direct reports, maybe I'm going through a goals review and I want that put on the front page, for example. We started to introduce things like that in the platform as well. I think it's also an important thing to note that on things like the performance, if there is things like continuous feedback, continuous performance, 
that we're noticing is coming more and more in terms of the the strategic objectives of organizations. We'll build that into the platform and we're agile enough to do that. I, I wouldn't really class it as a startup anymore. We're, we're more of a scale up. Um, right. But but we still operate agile enough to to mirror a startup there. I know we talked about that before we hopped on this conversation, but yeah. the ability to develop and be agile whilst retaining a, a client base is is something that's not always the simple simplest thing to do. It, it is, right? I mean, it, you're absolutely right. It, it's super hard, actually. Um, and having kind of worked for an ERP you know, provider, actually, I worked for a couple. I worked at DDS for a period of time. That was proper old school, <laughs> mainframe world. Um, and then, you know, over to PeopleSoft, which was sort of, you know, kind of a next level kind of approach. And then, and then suddenly, you know, just kind of watching these, these big old lumbering giants suffer, you know, trying to kind of get new stuff out to their install base and then having to get everybody trained up on it. And then, you know what I mean? And just making sure that the whole world understood like what feels like the most minute changes um, to now today. I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, the hyper the hyper carousel that we're on especially with ai it's just insane trying to keep on top of it it literally changes every day right there's like new releases of things there's new functionality coming out there's like oh my god have you have you heard about this have you heard about that it's absolutely nuts and of course you know software companies are not going to be able to keep up with that cadence and nor should they because you've got to make sure that stuff gets field tested and and kicked around a bit and stress tested to make sure that it's real and, uh, and that, frankly, people find it useful. What I like about your architecture and your approach here, and it's very similar to a company that I've worked with a lot in the past called CultureAmp. It's very similar, is that you listen. You listen to your customers. You listen for what it is they're experiencing with your tool, what they'd rather see. And then you basically wow them with, oh, by the way, and how about a bit of this? You know, And they're sort of like, well, yeah, I'll definitely have that. Thank you. Um, and so that notion and... Right. And yeah, and maintaining a level of an open architecture, right? That says we're always ever going to be, you know, kind of fine tuning this, improving this, you know, maybe even changing out a pretty solid engine part here, but we got to make sure that we can do this in an agile fashion and it's not going to, you know, take years. It'll take weeks. No, for sure. And um, <clears throat> yeah, like I've just said there, Culture Amp are great. Culture Amp are a great tool for that performance side of things. So that's a big compliment. So thank you. Um, by any means we're saying everyone get factorial look at what you're look at what you need from a platform look at what the solutions are on the market choose the best one for those needs the the good thing about factorial is we've got a good strength in depth in all of those features yeah. so we call ourselves industry agnostic i mean you talked about our background in the manufacturing sector in that operational side of things that was born out of when we were first created Right. Catering to markets such as Spain, such as France, where there was a lot of regulation on that side of things. So we had to be really strong in those areas. As we've developed out, we've actually took inspiration from platforms like Culture Amp that we really liked, that had things in a certain way on that performance side of things that we we thought maybe you want to reduce your tech stack. You want everything all in one so that you can pull those different data points into analytics on numerous different parts of the platform without everyone having to hop into a different platform each time without you having to take the data off the platform and load it into another one to pull reports on. Um, so, so yeah, that's that's a really big compliment, and that's something that we try to build in to, to have the best parts of everyone on the market. I think there's no point in being tribal, especially with the HR market. I think if someone's got a good solution, sometimes it's good to recognize that, yeah, they have a great solution in that area, and, and let's yeah. try and make a better one, or let's try and mirror that in our own platform. It's what, you know, it's, it's this notion of radical collaboration, right? Which is, you know, something we, I think the tech market is starting to wake up to it. I mean, there's still a lot of proprietary, you know, walling off of, you know, this is my territory, that's your territory. <clears throat> and uh, we're, you know, battling for red ocean space all the time. I think to your point, especially around the HR tech world, there is so much cool stuff happening and at speed. Uh, you know, came across in a really interesting platform recently called Zavi, uh, which is, by the way, is apparently, apparently just got acquired two weeks ago by Deal, um, you know, who are kind of starting to make a foray into the space coming from the, the sort of em employer of record space, which is interesting. So people are, you know, people's minds and imaginations are stretching, right? They're sort of like, well, we have this core functionality. We have a pretty good install base. And, you know, maybe we can morph into these other take capabilities. Uh, Team Taylor was doing this. An ATS solution suddenly wanted to be, uh, or maybe it was workable, workable. An ATS solution that suddenly wanted to be a, a full suite HR, you know, solution. 
okay, interesting. Um, those those are interesting thought experiments. But I love this notion of build something at the core that's awesome, that's really you know super super has super utility uh, across multitude of different areas. But always ever maintain the philosophy that we're ne we're never going to know it all. We're never going to be able to be everything to everybody. And if we're going to kind of differentiate ourselves in the marketplace, aside from adopting, you know, the, you know, the cool concepts of, of AI and things of that nature, we need to collaborate, you know, openly with some of the best tooling out there. And also, by the way, who mirror our philosophy in terms of customer care, ease of implementation, fantastic, you know, user experience on the front end. Um, navigability and all those other kind of wonderful concepts. The you know like to the extent that you can align with companies like that means that you know you've created this beautiful ecosystem of people who understand each other and hopefully are going to benefit from knowing each other. So yeah, I think Jack, that's a really it's a really clever move on Factorial's part. Yeah, and I mean I don't want to keep bringing it back to to the Microsoft thing, but but it's a very mm -hmm. good example of something like this where. We've noticed someone with a strength in the market where we're lucky enough to be paired with them and, and that they see the value in our solution. And yep. what that does is that when you're entering any of those other markets, we talked about, for example, a HR solution entering a payroll or maybe an ATS solution entering HR. Mm -hmm. What's really good about when we're foraying in towards adding the AI onto the platform is that because we're working in tandem with someone who is arguably the biggest player in HR in the world right now, that we've got that leg up. We're already over the wall at the start and we've already got that knowledge, which is going to be the springboard for when we're adding any of this on the platform later down the line. And I think that's a really important note as well, having the access to the um, the tools and the ability to actually leverage and make sure that when you're going into a new area, it's going to work and it's going to be of use rather yeah. than it being you pushing that on your um, pushing that on your existing client base saying you've got to use X, Y, and Z, making it, more difficult for their life if they don't move over to that i think it's better to show the value and show how you can actually develop and, and be of use yeah. in a different area rather than just pushing people because they're there to move across to it for example totally agree man totally agree listen jack i could be on on zoom with you all day long possibly <laughs> all weekend long talking about this um it's been loads and loads of fun super um super insightful uh and i love the sort of the new look and the new thinking that you're applying to, you know, kind of the direction of the organization. I think that's amazing. How do people engage with you guys? Um, you know, what, where should they get more material from? Um, you know, what about a demo, things of that nature? How, how should that work? I mean, obviously, if you want to contact me, Jeff, Big Bear Partners, Jeff at BigBearPartners.com, no brainer, more than happy to, to help you out with that stuff. Um, but yeah, Jack, what's the best way to connect? Yeah, so I mean, if you go on our website, so so for the UK, that would be factorial.co.uk. It's going to have all of those details on there on how you actually get on towards a demo with us. It's going to let you try it for free. It's going to give you all of the phone lines. So nice. feel free to reach out on there. You can also reach out directly to me. So I'm Jack Carey on LinkedIn. Um, have it so that I pass across some of the details as well if you want to shoot that out with any of this um, webinar there as well. But really yep. simple, just go on the website, factorialhr.co.uk. Um, and it's going to give you all of the information there. It's going to be really quick to have a call, have a demo. Um, I'd always suggest having a demo, trying it out, seeing how it fits. And like I say, I, I, I want to draw it back to that because sometimes on this calls, it can feel almost like a sales pitch for people. Yeah. But have a have a try out and have a look at what works for you. Have a look at how easy it is for the end user. Have a look at what you can do on the back end, what you can do with the data, how that's going to help your company in the long term. Um, and don't be scared to have a look at the market as well and scope out some um, some different providers, see how they can do that. And on the back of that, you're then best placed to make the informed insight on who's the best for you. Um, in fact, Toriel, we're pretty confident that most of the time that's going to be us, but sometimes it might not be us and, and that's fine as well. Um, I'm sure the feedback that we gather from that's going to help us develop forward in the future anyways. And, and like, I love that mentality, right? Because you don't want to just say, hey, we're all things to all people. We're the one-stop shop. You know, you don't have to look anywhere else kind of mentality. Look, I think it's, you know, the more you can be helpful, kind of like the Santa Claus in Miracle on 34th Street, right? You know, when, uh, when, when the store, when he was when he was uh when his store ran out of merchandise you know he was telling other people you know where, or telling people where to go to kind of go get get the uh the same thing possibly even for for less money i know that's not exactly what you're on about but it's this notion of look it's a big scary place out there it's a weird warehouse of 
a, a bizarre shopping experience trying to figure out, you know, what is the right technologies, you know, for us to kind of engage with. Again, especially in the SMB world, right? My budgets are limited. My my time is limited. Oh my God, you know, my patience is going to be limited. And certainly the patience of my executive team when they see how positive or negative the launch of your tool is in terms of, you know, coming anywhere close to delivering on the promises it made uh, and the expectations that they had going into it. Super important to get it right. Take your time, look around, talk to people who are agnostic and who are experts in this space. But I love your I love your mentality, Jack, uh, that notion of, look, better that you get the thing that you love that works for you um, and that makes sense to you because you're going to have to live with it for a long time and you're going to have to rely on it a lot. So sure. uh, make the right decision. Right. For sure. And I mean, just for a concluding note there, just, just to outline it for anyone who might be looking for a platform in terms of where our key strands in lie, but it's going to be that ease of use. It's going to be the depth in each one of those features. I'm sure there is other features in the market that would have geolocation for the time tracking. They'd have some level of AI in the ATS mm -hmm. and they'd have talent mapping in the performance. There's very few that have all of them, if any. Um, that's where our strands comes in. So it's that full breadth solution as well as the future state of the company. It's going to be the AI build in over time. It's going to be that exciting roadmap where we're actually developing, which yeah. I think is really important as well. It always is in tech, right? Everyone was using a BlackBerry 10 years ago and now everyone's on the iPhone. So, um, so yeah, Still I think those BlackBerry, are the part. But... <laughs> in... <laughs> so yeah. I think those are the part in words as well. Just, just to leave with, if anyone's wondering why to take a look on us as well. Yeah, no, it's a great shot, Jack. Thank you very much for that, mate. Listen, it's been wonderful uh, becoming reintroduced to what feels like an, a completely different company than what I originally uh, saw and uh, very, very excited, you know, to continue working with you guys in the future. So thank you for that, everybody. Um, wonderful. Thank you for your patience and uh, we'll catch up soon. Bye. Cheers, Jeff. Bye.